birth of Jesus Christ was all this wise. When, as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found the child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph from Austin, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought, while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of God, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be the child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took up to him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. This is the word of God.
east, went before them, till he came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and money. And being warned of God in the dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed to their own country and their way. Female crew, KK, and my name is Zionist, and this is my co host, oh. King Richie. And we went around finding royalties, wonderful people to tell us who Jesus is to them. And unfortunately, we found these four beautiful people. Actually, we found three today, King Ginobi. He decided to join us. So now So we're just going to ask them, and they'll give you the response, and we'll go from there. OK, so this is Queen Adana. Queen Adana, who is Jesus to you? He created the whole world, states, city, cities, streets, roads, and avenues, too. He also created you, too. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus is the creator. That's wonderful. Now, we're going to ask Queen Luke 
chapter 2, if you're there, say Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. There are not many of us again. Luke chapter 2, from verse 1. If you're there, say Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you, thank you. And it came to pass in those days that there were out, sorry, that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Serenius, the governor, when Serenius was governor of Syria, and all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in, a, in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the, and there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over them, and came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even to Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord had made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. When they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the, shepherd re and the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. Verse 21. And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcision of the child, his name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. God bless our reading in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's write. Wonderful to be up here again. It's wonderful to see all of us even on this special day. What is Christmas? What is Christmas? I mean, if, if you're following the media, if you're following what's going on in this world, Christmas is being challenged. You know, by atheists, by unbelievers, people just challenging Christmas. I think it's mostly because Christians don't even know what Christmas is. That's why, you know, it's, it's being challenged. Because when you don't stand your right, the devil's going to push you down. So what is Christmas? Christmas is observed by billions of people around the world. But many of them still don't know what Christmas is. Christmas is a public holiday. And holiday, as I said, is a holy day. It's now shut into holiday. So Christmas is supposedly a holy day for most of the world. What is Christmas? A day set aside for the commemoration of the birth of Jesus Christ. And commemoration means respect, remembrance, and celebration by doing something. So it's a day set aside to remember the birth of Jesus Christ, a day set aside to respect the birth of Jesus Christ. Here's the problem. You cannot truly celebrate Christmas, respect Christmas, respect the day set aside for Jesus. You cannot appreciate Christmas if you do not know Jesus. That is the problem. Many people don't know Jesus. Many don't. And there is nothing like Christmas without Jesus. Christmas is not just a public holiday, oh, we're just going home, no work today, or everyone is giving gifts. That's what Christmas is being pushed, com com commercialized into us, into the world. That's, oh, it's a commercial day, it's a public day, it's a public holiday, where everyone just gives gifts, everyone is happy, everyone is, you know, sharing love. But what is Christmas? Without Jesus, there's nothing like Christmas. My topic this morning is Jesus before Christmas. Jesus before Christmas. In every sense of the phrase, Jesus is before Christmas. Let's go to Colossians. Colossians chapter 2. Take us to Colossians chapter 2. 
I'm going to read from verse 6. Colossians chapter 2, from verse 6. It says, As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power, in whom also ye are circumcised with a circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who had raised him from the dead. And you, being dead in your sins, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, had he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Verse 16, check this, it says, Let no man therefore judge you in meat, or in drink, or in respect of a holy day. Or in respect of a holy day. That's how we'll read it now. Or in respect of a holy day, or of the new moon, or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. So, Jesus comes first. Christ comes first for what he has done for us. Don't let any man judge you and say, oh, this is Christmas. Oh, you don't have a Christmas tree in your house. Oh, you don't have lights there. Oh, you didn't give any gift. Uh, that is just your traditions of men, the rudiments of this world. The more important thing is Jesus. Is knowing who Christ is. Is knowing what Jesus has done for us. Amen? Amen? So, who is Jesus? Because to understand Christmas, to know what Christmas is, who is Jesus? To truly celebrate Christmas, who is Jesus? To remember what he has done. Remem remembrance of Christmas is knowing who Jesus is. And I will not pretend to comprehensively answer this question because I still want to know him <laughs> and the power of his resurrection. But uh, to truly know Jesus, he has to be formed in you. He has to be formed in you. Galatians chapter 4 verse 19. Paul talking to the Galatians. He said, My little children of whom I travel in bed again until Christ is formed in you. You can truly know Jesus by yourself. It's in, it has to be in you. The Bible says the spirit testifies with our spirits that we are sons of God. Amen. Philippians chapter 3 verse 10 to 11 says, That I may know him. That's what Paul himself is saying. So to know him, it's a personal thing to truly know who he is. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Amen? So this can be done by the Holy Spirit. The quickening of the body, as I read in Colossians. When Christ quickens, when the Holy Spirit quickens you, as it quickened Jesus Christ. Romans 8 verse 11 says, But if the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by His Spirit that dwelleth in you. Now, I realize that maybe uh, there are some new faces here. And I don't want to go too deep into the doctrine of you know, knowing Jesus, being formed in you. So I'm just going to look at what the Bible says about Jesus. Just a few things that the Bible says about Jesus. I know it's Christmas. We want to celebrate. We want to sing carols. So just a few things. Follow me here. I'll read 1 John. or Make that John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Read a few verses in John chapter 1. To know who Jesus is. Because when someone... Uh, initially gives his life to Christ, you will notice that he's referred to read John, the book of John, because John truly explains Jesus Christ, maybe too spiritually, but very simple. 
very makes it very simple for us. John chapter 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. And He was light, and the light was the light of men. And the light shined in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. Verse 8. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighted every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Verse 14. And the word was made flesh. That's what we're celebrating. And the word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. There's a lot of doctrine in these few verses that I just read. John 1, 1 to 14. Number one, Jesus is God. The beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Very simple. Jesus is God. The Trinity, the three are one. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 7, the same writer, he said, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. That's how we get the word three, Trinity, because Trinity is not in the Bible. But three are one is Trinity. Number two, Jesus is the Word of God. Jesus is the Word of God. The Word of God is truth. In John 17, 17, the Bible says, Sanctify them by... Uh, through thy truth, thy word is truth. And we know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by him, except through him. So if you believe on his name, then you become sons of God. That's what uh, John chapter 1 tells us. Jesus is the word of God. Amen? And it is by the word that men are converted. It's by the preaching of the word. How would they believe if they have not heard? How would they hear if you have not sent a preacher? So faith comes by hearing, and hearing what? The word of God. So it's through Jesus that we are saved. Number three, Jesus created all things. Let's go to Colossians. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1 says, By him everything was made. That's what we read in John. Let's see what Paul says in Colossians. Colossians chapter 1, I'm going to read from verse 12. It says, Giving thanks unto the Father, which had made us to uh, which had made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in, the, in light, who had delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. Verse 15 says, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. He is before all things and by him all things consist. So he's before all things, he created all things, and we are created for him, for his pleasure, and he's before all things. So he's before Christmas. Jesus before Christmas. Don't get it twisted. I mean, we were trying to celebrate Christmas, then putting Jesus into it. No. We're celebrating Jesus. Understand what Christmas is, so that you will not be moved in your faith. You will not be moved by the traditions of men or the rudiments of this world. I'll take you to Hebrew, Hebrews chapter 1, Hebrews chapter 1 from verse 1. Hebrews right before James, close to the end of the Bible. Hebrews chapter 1. Verse 1 says, 
God, who had sung three times in diverse manners, speak in time past unto the fathers by prophets, had in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he had appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. It's through the Son, it's through Jesus. Remember, Jesus is God. So God made everything. So it's through Jesus that he made the world. Remember, I'm talking about who is Jesus. Verse 3. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. Jesus told them, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. The express of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the, of the majesty on high. So it is through Jesus that everything consists. He created everything, everything consists by him, and everything is sustained by him. What do you think is keeping the sun up there or the stars up there? Why do you think the stars are not falling to earth? What do you think is making the seasons come? It is the word of his power. For God says, as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest, night and day, summer and winter shall not cease. That is the word of his power. No matter what you do, <laughs> night and day is coming. The seasons are coming. You can pray, God, I don't want it to snow. Guess what's going to happen? It's going to snow. It is the word of his power. Don't pray amiss. Pray according to the will of God. As Jesus said, not my will, but your will be done. Finally, I take it to Revelation chapter 4, verse 11. In fact, we know what that says. Revelation 4, 11. It says, Thou art worthy. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure we are and we're created. Amen? Amen? So everything was created for his pleasure. So the next point I'll give you is Jesus was literally before Christmas. Jesus was in the Old Testament. So let's look at some instances of Jesus being in the Old Testament. Um, the seed of woman. The seed of woman. Uh, I'll take you back to Genesis, all the way to Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. The Bible says, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Guess who Jesus, the God, was prophesying about? He's talking about Jesus. The seed of woman is Jesus. That's why Jesus sometimes is referred to as the Son of Man. Jesus is born of a woman. That's how, you know, Jesus sometimes is referred to in the Gospels. The Son of Man, born of woman, flesh. So he bruised the head of the, of the enemy, and the enemy only bruised his heel. That's a doctrine on his own. I'm not going to go deep into that. The second one is the seed of promise in Abraham. Jesus was the seed of promise in Abraham. I'll take you to Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12. I'm not going to go through the whole Bible. Just bear with me. I'll soon be done here. Genesis chapter 12 verse 3. It says, And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. In thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. We're talking about in your seed, in your loins. That's why Jesus is from Abraham, the lineage of David. In your loins. Now you say, oh, uh, how, what do you mean? How do I know that that's what the Bible meant? Let's read again. Genesis chapter 22. This is after Abraham tried to sacrifice Isaac. Genesis chapter 22, verse 16. It says, And said, Okay, let me start from 15. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time, and said, By myself have I sworn, said the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies, and in thy seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed. So he's saying in you, your seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed. You say, ah, Pastor, that is just the Israelites now. That is just Solomon. That is David. That's what Jesus was talking about. Okay, now let's see what the Bible says in Galatians chapter 3, verse 16. Galatians chapter 3, verse 16. That seed 
is talking about Jesus. Galatians 3 verse 16 says, Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He said not unto seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed which is Christ. So clearly, Paul is saying, don't get it confused. He's not talking about the lineage of Israel. He's talking about Jesus. So the Israel now is not through whom the nation of the earth is being blessed. It is Jesus. That's why we don't understand Christmas, because you don't understand Jesus. Joy to the world. Jesus came to bless all nations of the earth. He is the seed of promise. Uh, Pastor, I thought you said he was in the Old Testament. Okay, yes. I know I was talking in... Uh, uh, analogies. Now, Jesus was literally in the Old Testament. Jesus is before Christmas. He was here before all things were created. So he is in the Old Testament. I'll give you just two examples. In fact, one already said it. That angel that was speaking to Abraham from heaven. Who do you think that was? It says, by myself I've sworn. Which angel can swear by himself? That angel is Jesus. But, you know, that's another time. Let me give you two very clear examples so I don't spend time giving you doctrine. Two very clear examples. Number one, Melchizedek. Melchizedek. Jesus came in flesh form. Open to Genesis chapter 14. Genesis chapter 14. I'll just read you the story of what happened real quick. Genesis 14 from verse 17. And when Abraham heard that his brother was... No, that's not... Verse 17 says, And the king of Sodom went out to meet with him... Sorry, went out to meet him after his return from the slaughter of Chaldolama and of the kings that were with him at the valley of at the valley of Shabbat, which is the king's dale, and Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. Verse 19. And, ble uh, and blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. And, bl and blessed be the Most High God, which had delivered thine enemies into thy hand, and, gave, and he gave him tithes of all. You say, Pastor, but that was just a priest. That was just uh, a priest of the Most High God. How does the Bible say that that is Jesus? Open your Bible to Hebrews chapter 7. Hebrews chapter 7. You know, let the Bible explain itself. Don't let people give you their own opinions of what the Bible says. If you read the whole Bible, you find out what the Bible says about Jesus. Hebrews chapter 7, I'm going to start from verse 1. Hebrews chapter 7 from verse 1. It says, For this Melchizedek, or Melchizedek, king of Salem, clearly, we're talking about the same Melchizedek, because the book of Hebrews was written by Paul to the Jews, telling them of the, what the Bible says, how Jesus is glorified, who Jesus truly is, so that they can give their lives to Christ, because they don't believe that Jesus is the Messiah. So, Hebrews is writing to the Jews, explaining the Bible to them. So let's understand what the Bible says. For this Melchizedek, king of Sodom, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham, returning from the slaughter of the kings, and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation, king of righteousness, talking about this Melchizedek, is by interpretation, king of righteousness. And after that, also, king of Salem, which is king of peace. Remember, and his name shall be prince of peace. Anyway, verse 3, he says, this is clearly telling you that this Melchizedek was not normal. Verse 3 says, without father, without mother, without descent, Having neither beginning of days, nor end of life, but made like unto abided a priest continually. I can even stop here, but I'll go further. But look at that. He had no forefathers, no father or mother. He had no children. This king Melchizedek. It is Jesus that came as the flesh of the Son of God. He came to, to, to Abraham according to the Bible. It's not me saying it. It's very clear that Jesus came down. No descent, no father or mother, but made like the Son of God. Remember when uh, Nebuchadnezzar saw the fourth man in the fire and said, Wow, that is the Son of God, like unto the Son of Man. Amen? Amen. Let's keep going. Verse 4. Now, consider this great man. 
Sorry. Now consider how this great man was, unto whom even the patriarch, patriarch Abraham gave it, the tent of the spot. And verily, they that are of the sons of Levi, who receive the office of priesthood, have a commandment to take tithe of all the people according to the law, that is, of their, of their brethren, though they come out of the loins of Abraham. But he whose descent is not counted from them received tithe of Abraham, and blessed him that, him that had the promise. And with, without all the contradictions, the less is blessed of the better. So, Bible is trying to say that for someone to bless somebody is a greater person to bless a lesser person, right? I mean, you go to Jesus, bless me. You know, the Bible says the, the giver is greater than the receiver, right? So, he's saying that for somebody to bless somebody, the better is blessed of the less. So, if people are giving tithes to the loins of Abraham, that's talking about the Levites, how much more the one that Abraham gave a tithe to? And he blessed him. So that is clearly Jesus. Amen? Amen. Jesus lives. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Has no father, no mother, according to the descent of man. Um, and he was alive before Christmas. The second one, real quick. The second one, real quick. The captain of the Lord's host. That's what I call it. The captain of the Lord's host. Open your Bibles with me to Joshua. Joshua chapter 5. Everybody remembers the story of... Um, um, the Jericho, right? You my kids know that story now. The story of Jericho. And they shouted and the walls came down. How did that happen? Who gave them that, you know, that truth, the word? Who, who told them what to do? And that was Jesus himself. Let's read it from the Bible. Joshua chapter 5. I'm going to read a few verses from verse 13. Joshua chapter 5 from verse 13. It says, And it came to pass, when Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted up his eyes and, be, and looked. And behold, there stood a man. Art thou for us or for our adversaries? And he said, Nay, but as the captain of the host of the Lord, am I now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him, what saith my Lord unto his servant? And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoe from off thy foot, for the place whereon thou standest is holy. And Joshua did so. If you keep reading, I want to stop there, but I want to show you two things. Verse, verse, chapter 6, verse 1. Remember, I, I told us in this church that chapters and verses were not originally in the Bible, in the text. Was added for reference. So the story continues. Many people just stop with oh, the end of chapter 5. That story ends. Chapter 6 is a brand new story. No, the story continues. So what happened after he removed his uh, shoes? Now, Jericho was straightly shut up because the children of Israel, because of children of Israel, none went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, Guess who the Lord is? The captain of the host of, uh, of, of the Lord. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given. Uh, have given into thy hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. Okay, let me stop here. Just show you that the a continuous story. So Joshua went to meet this man and his sword was drawn. And Joshua came up to him. I mean, they are ready to attack Jericho. They are waiting for what they need to do. And Joshua came up to him and said, uh, are you for us or are you against us? And the man said, no, I'm not for you. I'm not against you. Guess what? You are for me. <laughs> I'm not for you. You are for me. I am the captain of the host of the Lord. The king of kings and the Lord of lords. That's what he's basically saying. And the Bible says that Joshua fell down and worshipped. If you read the Bible, it's very clear. No one receives worship except the Lord God Almighty. Any angel that they worship, uh, the angel will say, no, 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 stand up, don't worship me. I'm a fellow servant like you. You only worship God. So for the fact the captain of the host of the Lord received worship, he is the Lord. He is Yahweh. If you look at your Bibles, and I hope no one is using anything other than King James. But if you look at your Bible, when they say Lord, and they're talking about Yahweh or Jehovah, it's Lord in all capitals. Lord. So it says, and the Lord saying it is God. Amen? Uh, let me show you another one real quick. Revelation, uh, to even explain further, that that is the captain of the host. 
In Revelation chapter 19, Revelation chapter 19, I'm going to read from verse 11. It says, And I saw heaven opened. Revelation 19, verse 11. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine, in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he dreaded the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of the Almighty God. And he had on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I mean, if you doubt that that is Jesus Christ, then you know you, need, you should never be sleeping deep. <laughs> and you should come to me for some teaching. That clearly is Jesus Christ riding on the horse, leading the armies of heaven. Because someone might say, oh no, the captain of the host of the Lord is an angel. It's probably Angel Michael because he's the you know, strongest, he's the warrior. So he's the captain. No, no, no. Jesus is the captain. If you read Son of Songs of Solomon, you see the, the husband saying, you know, I'm your banner, you're my armies. So we are the armies of him. We are his soldiers. Jesus is our captain. Reading this story, for those of us that come for digging deep, reminds you of what? The lion of the tribe of Judah, right? You know, the wine press, the wrath of God, all of that, wearing red, all that. So it reminds you of Jesus Christ, the lion of the tribe of Judah. My question for you today is, who is your captain? Who is your captain? Finally, Jesus was slain before the foundations of the earth. I'm telling you that Jesus is before Christmas. He was slain before the foundations of the earth. Revelation 13 verse 8. Revelation 13 verse 8. Money cannot save you. We are not saved by corruptible things, but incorruptible. Money, silver, gold, that's all mammon. That's why God says you cannot serve both God and mammon. You have to know Jesus so that you can serve God. Money cannot save you. Christmas celebrations cannot save you. Celebrating Christmas without knowing Jesus cannot save you. Amen? Only Jesus can save you. You have to know Jesus because Jesus is before Christmas. Jesus agreed to die for our sins. Before we were formed, before we were created, the Bible says while we were yet sinners, Christ came and died for us. He was made manifest to us. That's why he can come and die for us because he has already said he will come and do it. No matter what you do, the sins that you committed yesterday, committed now, that you're going to ever commit, he has died for it. Amen? The Bible says the wages of sin is death. And Jesus came and died for us. The gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. He has paid that price. Because life is in the blood. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus is before Christmas and over Christmas. Let's put Jesus first. Put him first. Because in John 10.10, 10, the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I have come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. Let's bow heads.